right, so we're going to review a little bit because it's been a while since we last talked about this. Um, does anyone remember what a phenotype is? Tell me. It's a trait that uh, appears to the breeding human. Yeah, and does anyone remember what a genotype is? Jack. Genetic makeup of a trait. Yes. Yeah, um, can anybody give me a brief explanation of what the law of segregation is? Then where gametes, do the parents cross or gametes segregate by themselves into their own family? Or alleles segregate by themselves? Um, each trait is segregated independently. I mean, no, that's the wrong <laughs> um, They're segregated during gamete formation, is basically what it says. So, yeah. Um, what about independent assortment? If you have um, two dominants, that's, that's just um, homozygous. Uh, when you're looking at heterozygous, if you have complete dominance, it just means that the dominant allele just takes over and that's the thing that's shown in the phenotype. Um, anyone know what incomplete dominance is? Jack? Isn't that where if you're, if both alleles are dominant, the different traits you kind of mix? Um, yeah. Um, the way I kind of look at it, like it's neither one is completely dominant. So you don't get like one, like you don't get that specific trait showing through in the phenotype. So that's kind of when we talk about like the red and white flowers that they make pink flowers. It's because neither one is completely dominant, so they kind of mix and blend together. And then the last type is co-dominance, which might be a little bit more kind of what you're talking about. Does anyone know what that is? Sam, you can tell me, sorry. Um, that's where both. Uh, My question to you then is, what is exactly is the difference between incomplete dominance and co-dominance? Okay, um, so incomplete dominance, um, that specific trait does not show through in the phenotype because neither one is completely dominant. So that's like saying like the red flower that we talked about, like red is not shown in the next generation of that offspring in the heterozygous form. So you form kind of a new phenotype as opposed to um, co-dominance where both are individually shown. So like that's what Tony said is that you get both colors shown in like a cat or something. Or in the example of blood is that you can have A and B blood types. So there's both A present and B present. And you both can see both of those. That kind of answer? Or? The, the thing that I like to include in there too is that when you're talking about something like incomplete dominance, don't forget one of the alleles or alternate forms of the gene is recessive and in a homozygous recessive situation you see the recessive trait, homozygous dominant you see the dominant trait and then the heterozygote um, you don't get a complete expression of that dominant trait, but you still have a recessive allele there. Yeah. 
whereas in codominance, um, the two dominant alleles for different uh, phenotypes are equally expressed as dominant traits, but then the homozygous recessive gives you a phenotype that's typical of the homozygous recessive. So just kind of something to remember about, you know, you know, what exactly is that recessive allele doing? Okay, so when we left off on um, whatever day that was, we were talking about um, pedigrees, and does anyone, can anyone tell me um, what we use pedigrees for, like why they're important in genetics? Jack? So you mean like carriers of disease? Yeah. Or the traits? Yeah, so pedigrees allow us to um, predict traits that would show up in generations of offspring because we can't like manipulate somebody's gene or whatever. And um, if we look at the picture on the board, it's gonna be this one. Um, the square's a male, the circle's a female. Um, if the square is filled in, it's an affected male. If the circle's filled in, it's an affected female. And a square in a circle shows mating, and then this just shows the offspring, starting with the first one on the left. And this picture um, shows three generations of um, a trait for a widow's peak. And if we remember, um, the dominant allele can be shown with a capital letter, and then the recessive allele can be shown with a lowercase letter. And um, the first generation grandparent, the grandfather, was heterozygous dominant. So um, he had he showed characteristics of a widow's peak, and then the grandmother was homozygous recessive. And um, you can see how the trait went through to the next generation, and the two parents were both heterozygous, um, heterozygous dominant. Here. and then um, the dominant allele for the widow's peak showed in one daughter, but the other did not show in the second daughter. So if the widow's peak didn't show, you can automatically assume that the, da the daughter that didn't have a widow's peak was homozygous recessive, and you can't be sure whether or not the child that shows a widow's peak is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. And um, in the next picture, um, another pedigree can be shown for attached and unattached earlobes, and the same thing showing um, the capital F for a dominant um, allele, then the lowercase f, and then it just traces through again. And um, so basically, like we said, uh, pedigrees allow us to predict the probability of a child having a certain trait or characteristic, and like Jack said, it can help us predict if a child can be a carrier for um, a particular disease from the parents, like a genetic disease that's carried on. Okay, um, so probability with pedigrees, um, the way I kind of look at it is that sometimes you don't always know what exactly a person is in a pedigree, so you don't know if they're homozygous dominant or if they're heterozygous. So um, there's a little bit of guessing that has to go on, and sometimes they'll ask you for like a probability. And I think the easiest way to kind of figure out the probability that um, the child in the pedigree has a certain trait is to do a Punnett square, which I know Maggie and Emily are gonna talk about next, um, but I just wanna kinda introduce it. Uh, when you do a um, Punnett square, you can get, you can take the two um, genotypes of the two parents, and then you kind of can calculate what the possible outcome is for those offspring. So once you do that, um, you can kinda get how often do you think the child will have like a widow's peak, or how often do you think they won't um, and what's the chances that they're homozygous dominant versus heterozygous dominant. So I think the easiest way when you're talking about um, probability with uh, pedigrees is to just use Punnett squares. 